Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, which was Christmas Day. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7, where Isaiah writes, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. My dear fellow worshipers of the Christ child, the prophet Isaiah was inspired by God to speak and to write a lot of words of judgment against what was supposed to be God's people. He had to warn them and call the people to repent because they were worshiping idols. They were rebelling against God. And well, Isaiah did call them to repentance, but tragically they didn't really listen to what Isaiah had to say. They continued, well, for the most part, in their idolatrous ways, in their rebelling against God. And so because of that, well, Isaiah also had to tell them about this Babylonian captivity, how Jerusalem, the temple, would be destroyed. They'd be carried off in this 70-year Babylonian captivity. And now that's largely the first half of Isaiah's book. But in our reading, we're in the second half of the book where the tone changes and instead of speaking so much the words of judgment, now instead, here we have a call to rejoice. A call to rejoice. Chapter 52 begins with this call to rejoice to the people. He says, Awake, O Zion, you were sold for nothing and without money you will be redeemed gets us to think back a little bit further as God called the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. So also what God was going to do is God was going to bring them back from their captivity in Babylon. And here is some good news, some beautiful news, some good tidings of great joy. Isaiah said again, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God come, reigns. Uh, the good news of that deliverance from Babylon, that would be shouted from the mountaintops and there would be messengers who would be traveling with that wonderful message that that Freedom from Babylon would take place. Those messengers of that good tidings of great joy, well, they'd be running to the people with the news. And when he says here, oh, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Oh, I often remember with that verse, a member of Calvary who talked about a sermon that she heard uh, on this section and what the pastor had to say about the beautiful feet that were here. Remember, remember that you know, they were wearing sandals and the paths and the roads that they were traveling on were probably mostly dirt paths. They could be muddy paths. And so the feet of those messengers who came with these beautiful messages, well, sometimes not beautiful messages, but the messengers who ran with these messages, their feet were probably dirty and grungy and smelly. But actually, if you think about it, if they are coming with wonderful news, who cares if they're dirty, grungy, and smelly? They're beautiful feet because they're running with that wonderful, beautiful message. And now the message that Isaiah first is referring to here, of course, is how the Jews would be freed from their Babylonian captivity, how they'd go back to the promised land, rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, and ultimately the Savior would end up being born one of their descendants. 
Here he says, the messenger says, your God reigns. And now see, God, it's so wonderful for us to realize God always remains in control. He always remained in control, even when Jerusalem and the temple were being destroyed, when the people were carried off in that 70 year captivity. And now see, God had a reason for all of that. Well, to punish those who had rejected him and to discipline the small remnant of believers in the land, to discipline them and to get them to see how important and necessary it was for them to always be close to God and his word and to trust in his promises. Well, when those Jews, the small remnant, returned from the Babylonian captivity, they especially then saw that their God reigns. And now, here it is, Christmas time. It's, it's easy for us at a time like this to think about, to call to mind how Jesus came to be born the King of the Jews. It's easy for us to think of the messengers in the fields of Bethlehem, those angels who shouted out the good news to the shepherds out there in the fields near Bethlehem. And it's also easy for us maybe to absorb and take comfort in the beautiful message that, that our God is King and that he's ruling over all things for the good of his church, for the good of his kingdom. But it's probably also easy for us as we're in this sinful world with all of its problems. And oh, again, we list things like COVID and wars and rumors of war, racial tension, political divides, and, and so many other things. We can think of all of those things and maybe we wonder Maybe we could wonder about those good tidings of great joy. Are they really real? And yes, they are real. As the messenger says here, our God reigns. Our God reigns. He came into the world 2,000 years ago, born of the Virgin Mary. He went to the cross and he fought against Satan and sin and death and hell. He fought against them and he won the perfect victory for us. He opened the doors of heaven for us. Well, Isaiah says, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Ah, good tidings of great joy and I I pray in this Christmas season and, and always for that matter that all of us would keep on seeing the beautiful feet of those who would proclaim to us those good tidings of great joy. Think of those tidings of great joy. In the town of David, a Savior has been born to you he is Christ the Lord, and our God reigns. And by the grace of God, you and I belong to that kingdom now and, and will belong to it forever, all because of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending us messengers with good tidings of great joy. Our God reigns. He came into the world, our world, to be our Savior, and he accomplished his work so that we, through faith in him, can be sure of being in his kingdom forever. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.